So um, it is uh, my absolute pleasure to welcome a legend to the pages of Abaddon magazine and uh, without much of an introduction, uh, one of the originators of second wave black metal. On behalf of Dark Funeral, I present you Lord Dariman. How are hey, you hi, doing? Man. How yeah, are you I'm doing pretty all right today. Ah, keeping, keeping busy. Yeah, it's a kind of a busy day, and uh, sometimes you, you know, feel like you need more hours. But uh, I mean, I can't complain. I mean, things are start happening again, and you know, just you know, it's going to take time to get back in the in the groove again. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. You know, going that. going from going from nothing to just full throttle, is, <laughs> you know. Yeah, <laughs> but, I bet uh, you are with the new record and all. Yeah, um, but, but as I said, I don't complain. It's good. It's just, you know, yeah, just going to get, you know, try to get used to to that, you know, can start yeah. living again. And things, to life things again, start happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Okay, um, so my first question would be, um, well, uh, the phases of your career, um, especially with your discography, uh, because you had the roughly sounding beginning and then from Diabolis Interium onward, it's this bombastic sounding thunder. And uh, then I look at your covers, uh, you had the dark blue phase and the red one and now it's dark blue again. And there's also the titling of your records, uh, the English titles, then there were several Latin titles, then English again. So was any of that intentional or it just turned out like this? It just turned out like that. Uh, uh, I've said it before, I said it again, you know, all this, uh, you know, before people start mentioning what you just said, you know, with the blue era, the red era, uh, Latin, English, uh, you know, before people and media start talking about it, start making question about it, we haven't even talked about it within the band we was like kind of surprised that you know everybody made a big deal out, out of it uh, and paid attention to to those kind of things which we didn't do really ourselves so well you, you were kind of surprised by that yeah yeah i mean for us it was like you know we we just go with the flow you know when we pick uh, artwork and uh, when we when we set the titles, uh, it, it what 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 we feel is fitting the record the best, you know. Uh, so uh, we don't really, we never really thought about that it has to be Latin or English. It's just you know, it just have come to us naturally. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, oh, a sort of a weird question, but uh, it got me thinking uh, since I've been um, watching some of your shows. Um, on the internet, um, do you sometimes identify your live shows uh, to a sort of a dark uh, musical theater? I mean, um, you're not you're you're out there wearing full body armor, corpse paint, as costumes, assuming the character of Lord Ariman while trying to induce some sort of a feeling and uh, blackened atmosphere to the audience. Uh, do you ever think about the connection between these two different kinds of art and uh, how often do you enjoy other art forms? Do they inspire you when you create or something like that? Uh, well, when it comes to our live shows, and um, you know, black metal, this is what black metal is, you know, when you watch us live. Uh, and, and for me, it's always been, you know, black metal is not just music, it, it's so many more things. And, and uh, naturally, it's, it's also uh, a very strong expression when it's performed live on stage. And there are so many things that I feel like has to go hand in hand. Uh, uh, you know, the music, uh, you also want to, you know, give, uh, at least for me, I've always, you know, when I write music, uh, I always see images in front of me. It's like a movie, even more these days than before. Uh, so for me, it's always been, you know, the visual side of, this type of music have always been a very important thing and uh, and yeah I mean this is just how we became you know it's it's not like something that's that's forced or anything it's like 
you know, is this part of our, uh, our you know, uh, what you call it, artistic, uh, you know, artistic side of yeah. the band, uh, you know, our way to kind of express uh, more side of the band. And, uh, yeah, yeah I, it's, for, 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 for me, it's always, you know, they just, everything, as I said, everything has to go hand in hand. And, the visual side is very important for uh, for a band like Dark Funeral. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you what you mean. Um, and uh, can you agree with me that uh, as an artist, you need to possess a healthy dose of ego? Because something like, um, well, I'm I'm sure you find uh, We Are the Apocalypse the best black metal record since the previous Dark Funeral record, at least in your no, own of opinion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, as a songwriter, I always want to top myself uh, and the band uh, for every record we write. I mean, it's music. People have different kind of tastes. So, uh, but I got to do what I got to do, and I got to do, and I got to follow my heart and, and my vision with the uh, with the music. And uh, while well, considering we. We're doing pretty good, you know, 30 years after we started, you know, I've been doing something right. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. And um, you mentioned uh, composing. Uh, how much attention do you, do you um, put on details uh, when you are uh, preparing uh, songs, albums? The, the small, the tiny ones that the listener doesn't normally hear upon the first spin of the record but uh, they make a world of change for the song uh, and um, I found I find the amount of those uh, details rising rapidly since uh, Atera Totus Sanctus and it's basically culminating with uh, very rich records such as uh, We Are the Apocalypse and um, is it uh, some sort of an instinct that uh, lets you know when the song is actually done and ready to be presented to the audience? Uh, yeah, details are very important for me, and and uh, I feel like, just as you mentioned, uh, especially the last record, I feel like it was that for me. Even though I've, I've written the music, uh, when I when I listen to the final result and and you know what we have cr- had created, you know, I was like, for every time I listen to it, uh, it just start you know growing on me. Uh, and that's uh, that's what I feel is really cool with music, uh, when you, you know, you, especially this kind of extreme music, you know, you put a, put it on the first time, but uh, if it's if it's a lot of depth in it and lots of detail, you know, there's more things to to discover under uh, the first wall of sound you you uh, are presented with, and uh, and that that's something. It's it's not like I'm I'm you know by intention is trying to to work like that, but uh, uh, but there are I I know that there are lots of things that for me it, it makes such a huge fucking difference with that note on that right place, uh, you know when when I you know when I'm in the writing uh, mode. Uh, you know, presenting ideas for the other guys, showing, you know, uh, I was like, I can send two clips, like, with one single note that differ. For me, it's, it, it, it can mean the world, you know, but normally the reply I get, like, I don't get it. I don't hear the difference. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, but for me it's it's uh, and this is uh, even my bandmates so you know know how I write the music and uh, and everything and they can tell the difference sometimes. So I know that uh, yeah sometimes uh, I'm kind of picky on on just small things, but that's how it is when you're a songwriter. For 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 me it's so important that everything has to work work out in, in my head. You know the way I hear it in my head. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes it uh, it can be one note that I uh, maybe just change one note to a different note, or or just change that the p- position of that note just slightly. Uh, yeah, but yeah. it turn, turns out turns out better in the end. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it. at least for me, and 
I'm not sure if everybody, you know, can hear all this small thing. Of, of course, nobody knows what I'm talking about, you know, uh, because I haven't told anything about the final result. But, uh, but I, I think, you know, some people should definitely give 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 our record more spins uh, to, you know, dive deeper into the sound, the wall of sound, because there's lots of things going on that. Uh, uh, sometimes I feel like, oh, they haven't got anything, you know. Yeah, yeah, I get that. They haven't understood it, so. <laughs> and, and 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 I know myself. I'm, I'm, I, you know, sometimes that happens myself when I listen to a record. First time I can be like, you know, when I listen to another band releasing a new record, f- first time it can be like, ah, oh, shit, man, this is not really what I was, was expecting. Then after a couple of spins, and I know I always need to give those record more spins, and and most of the time those are the ones that keep spinning on my stereo the most, because I let myself, you know, dive deeper into the into the sound picture and and really understand what's going on, uh, and sometimes you don't get that from from just one or two listens. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know what you're saying. I mean, I've been spinning the new record for a while now, and uh, uh, speaking of those details, exactly, uh, the new record has, uh, in my opinion, gone the furthest away from the typical, let's call it typical, dark funeral sound. And uh, I mean, uh, it's still apparent that you're listening to dark funeral, but uh, the guitars have gone in a slightly different direction. The drums are dynamic like never before. The vocal seems to be going uh, a bit more of a, um, a bit more of a direct approach this time. And uh, can you comment on this? Well, short review or something? Yeah, I think I pretty much uh, understood what, what we were trying to do with this record. And uh, yeah, I mean, we we have our sound. I think that's a strong stra- trademark. You know, when you put on a dark funeral record. You should know it's a fucking dark funeral record. If it's something like, I don't know, like some other band or uh, or just something totally new that you didn't expect from dark funeral, it wouldn't be dark funeral. Uh, so I just see that we have found our our sound, uh, which is a strong trademark. Not you can't say that to about many bands, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, there, there, there's a strong so, basis so, for your sound. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes I don't understand when, when people, yeah, it's, it's just dark funeral. Yes, but think a little bit about it. You know, it's a fucking strong trademark. No, not many bands can create that trademark. So, uh, uh, well, yeah, but, yeah, but so you... I, I think that's just, I think that's just a strong side. But, uh, but I feel like I'm kind of confident. I'm getting more and more confident in myself in the songwriting. Uh, of course, I go through those periods when I feel like everything i write just sucks and i'm just gonna quit you know uh but that's part of you know being a creative person i guess yeah yeah i uh, get you, you but, have uh, you have the basis of uh, dark funeral which is dark funeral but i i still don't think you created uh, two identical albums uh with in regards to every aspect of your creation it's just uh, uh, one record and then the next one it's well, the same basis, the foundation is there, but uh, it's gone just a step forward uh, in order to, well, give out more. Yeah, uh, and that's that's what I feel is inspiring, you know. And as I was going to tell you, it's like, uh, I, in one way, I feel kind of, kind of more confident in my songwriting these days, you know, for every, uh, every record I write, you know. And, and I kind of let myself you know, not get stuck in things that, you know, in, in stupid thoughts that I can't do this or that, you know. Yes, I can. It's, it's, if it feels good, you know, I, I can, you know. But earlier I was, I could kind of lock lock myself in, in, in lots of weird uh, ideas that popped up in my head that I couldn't do this or that. But uh, nowadays I kind of feel like more free and, you know, I just, you know, more free in my my songwriting, and uh, I find that more inspiring now and also for the future. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, and uh, while we're at the musical side of uh, We Are the Apocalypse, uh, can you talk me through Leviathan? 
because I find it, um, let's say, the strangest of the album, uh, especially in that middle section that uh, almost sounds oriental. And um, honestly, it's my favorite one of the album. So uh, what possessed you to, to dive into these, uh, well, for the lack of a better word, <laughs> weird musical directions? I don't know. I mean, I, I just, you know, it just felt good for me to do this. And of course, that, uh, I think that oriental kind of melody you're talking about, if, if, uh, if I understand correct, uh, I, yeah. I just felt this real occult feeling with that melody. And it, it's, it's simple in a way, but still it's kind of, you know, it, it breaks up the song. Uh, the, 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 the rhythm, the rhythm in in it is uh, is still a little bit. Uh, you know, I have a lot of uh, what you call it. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember what you call just that type of uh, rhythm, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's it sounds to me a bit oriental, and um, it uh, it fits like a glove to the song. You know, even even if uh, it's uh, not what you would expect normally uh, from a, bela- of a black metal band, and uh, you, oh, but... yeah, you use the the segment and uh, it just works. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, that, that that whole part was like, you know, it just felt like I ne- we never done those super heavy uh, chord uh, riffs before, and then adding this real occult kind of oriental melody to it just gave it even more uh more cool feel i guess you know more uh more interesting feel and uh yeah i i know that danny when we were in the studio daniel didn't really understand that part uh what i were thinking about it but then i told him like okay so in my head it's like the rhythm guitar is the one that keeps pushing, you know, the heaviness of the of that yeah. riff, and and the melody is just giving the atmosphere and feeling to it. Uh, so the the rhythm guitar was going to be the 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 one that was kind of the lead guitar, even though there's a melody that that was like coloring the the kind of uh, the riff. Uh, yeah. And when I mentioned that, he was like, "Oh no, I get it. Of course, that's the way it should be." And I was like, "Yeah, that's that's what I had in mind." So, yeah, it, it just felt really good and interesting. And, uh, I mean, talking about small details, just in, in that particular song, for me it was like, you know, that bridge before it kicks off again. Uh, you know, we we had those kind of parts in, in previous songs, but it's always, you know, a drum roll or, you know, if, you know some cymbals and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. This time I felt like I just want to keep the drums away from the whole part and let the guitar, uh, the guitars just lead the the way. And uh, you know, going from uh, the lead guitar, just adding you know the rhythm guitar without any drums, drum fills or anything. That's that that's quite normal. And then just yeah. kick off and, and kick everybody in the face again. Uh, and that's for me. It was like such a great idea. I came out, felt like I came up with. But yeah, may, yeah, maybe but not yeah. everybody understand, you know. Yeah, but that, that, that's but, that, that's what that's what makes it interesting, you know. Because yeah, okay, there's the part where it's dark funeral, and there's a, there's this part where wait, wait, it's uh, it's it's not quite dark funeral, but it, it does the job. It makes the the song interesting. It's interesting to hear. Interesting to well, sing along and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, it's uh, it's what you didn't expect, but you got it, and it just works fine. Yeah, cool, man. I appreciate you take notice for those kind of yeah. things. Yeah, and um, also uh, with regards to the latest album, um, to my ears, uh, it seems to be. Well, more oriented to atmosphere than your previous records, uh, even if the majority is obviously very aggressive and violent and uh, everything a Dark Funeral uh, album has to have. But uh, it seems to me like you focused a bit more on the atmospheric part 
uh, not just in the obvious places like the slower mid-tempo tracks. Did it uh, just emerge consciously or was it one of your goals for We Are the Apocalypse? Uh, I think that that was something that came like halfway through the the writing process when I got the the feel like, uh, you know, I, I, I remember we, we were writing, we were working on uh, on the song Nosferatu, and uh, and we were discussing uh, on on Zoom uh, with uh, with Helia Mother about uh, the song and when we were trying out vocals to it, and um, when we were like halfway through that that song is like I got this whole new vibe and feeling for this record I was like and this is just not a musical journey this is like you know this brings you into a much deeper world uh, which which is kind of you know cinematic for me uh, and I thought uh, you know always when I write music I, I see pictures in front of me it's like a movie that Comes yeah. up. Uh, but this time it, it just became such a more epic feel to that movie, uh, you know, feel that yeah. I normally get. And, and uh, I don't know, maybe that set my mind. It, it was not, not, not like I, I told myself, like, okay, I got to keep working in that direction. But maybe unconsciously it, it set my mind to, you know, when I was was working on riffs and melodies and things like that you know that that was what i were looking for when i came up with the ideas uh, you know that that brought but i always try to you know bring this symphonic feel to it it's like you know uh, for one of the songs uh, uh i can't remember which uh, which one now but uh then the chorus in that song is is the, the riff in itself is is probably one of the most uh, atmospheric uh, riffs I ever written, uh, or and symphonic riff I ever written. And the idea that popped up in, in my head was kind of Phantom of the Opera, but in, in my kind of weird you know way. Uh, so so that's why I, I try to push the Hellia Mother in that direction for the vocals. It's, probably the most intense vocal parts uh, we ever had. And I, I said, I'm sorry, but it's just got to be this way, you know. And I know it's going to be really tough, but uh, <laughs> uh, this is the this is what I have in mind for this part. Uh, and uh, and he, he nailed it quite fast, actually. And uh, I think I told him already in the, you know, writing mode, but also in the studio that... Uh, I'm really impressed by uh, that you made that part so fucking good. Yeah, because I knew that it was it was going to be a challenge for sure uh, for any any vocalist. Yeah, um, uh, you mentioned uh, this uh, symphonic feel uh, to to the to the record that uh, that was actually going to be my my next question uh, because uh, it does sound uh, bombastic. It does sound like uh, uh, a concert hall, the the whole record, you know, the whole vibe of it, and uh, it's um, it's also something that um, I haven't noticed uh, so much in your previous records, uh, though it uh, occurred um, on some occasions. But uh, again, uh, what's your stance on the um, on the um, symphonic parts i mean of course you're not uh, going for the orchestra feel and uh recording live orchestras all the time but uh you do have that uh, that uh, orchestral vibe when you perform yeah i mean i've always uh, had this idea or you know thing in my head uh what I want to create is a satanic, the ultimate satanic symphony, but I want to do it uh, in, in a black metal way and without any sim, uh, synthesizers or keyboards and, and things like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's, I guess that's one, one part of me as a guitarist and a songwriter, uh, you know, those kind of riffs that I, I try to you know, work on those uh, atmospheric uh, and symphonic uh, melodies and, and riffs. And uh, I guess I learn for every song and every record I write. Uh, 
uh, how to improve that and, and of course it, it comes with you know how inspired you are and, and things like that also of course but uh, I always try to improve myself uh, on those uh, things too and uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, sometimes I'm kind of surprised myself. Damn, this was kind of <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't expect this coming out. So, but yeah. this, this is really cool, and some part just keep growing and growing into something really fucking epic. And uh, yeah, because yeah. I, I, I gotta say, for the past couple of records, uh, your lead guitars uh, really do sound like. Uh, um, uh, have that vibe actually not sound obviously but uh, have that vibe uh, of uh, sort of a solo violin uh, playing or a solo piano pl- playing over a, a background of, a, of an orchestra and it uh, just fascinates me that you were able to to do something like that in a black metal band well that, that's what's, uh, what I hear in my head but I, I want to kind of transfer it uh, trans- you know into this uh, uh, crazy black metal uh, you know yeah world uh, yeah I get that now um, I-, I know you are uh, not uh, writing the lyrics but uh, I guess you approve of them and uh, have at least some connection to what is covered within them right yeah of course yeah, um, so because uh, I would like to hear your opinion on some of the uh, topics, because um, you hardly see any uh, reference to the church as an entity in your lyrics, uh, never has been, and uh, your stance on the matter is quite clear. But uh, can I make the assumption that the lyrics are aimed at the proverbial angels and demons fighting a battle within each individual human being rather than literal? supernatural beings uh, fighting it off in some field in the Middle East? Yeah, I always, you know, uh, well, now Hell and Mother is kind of free to, to write well, what they want to write about, but uh, naturally we talk much about it, and, and I, I think, you know, both of us on the same page with this, and, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's this inner battle, but, you know, uh, as, as you just mentioned, it, it's not this superficial, you know, entities that uh, that the Bible portray, but it, it, it's the the dark energies you have within yourself, uh, and uh, how you can use it for different purposes. And yeah, it's yeah. like uh, like I made a quote uh, for uh, for let the devil in. Uh, I can't remember exactly what I said, but uh, some press quote I gave to the record label. But this is kind of, you know, what you can achieve if you if you use your inner de- devil, you know, your inner Satan, uh, in, in the right way, then everything is possible. Then you can just let out those fucking inner demons into creating this uh, epic song. Yeah, yeah. The, the the song you mentioned, uh, "Let the Devil In," it's uh, it's actually got uh, really strong lyrics and uh, with the video and uh, musical background, and uh, it all fits together to well, as you called it, uh, really cinematic feel to it uh, with um, with the whole atmosphere surrounding the song and the fact that it's not this uh, super fast. Uh, puncher of a song uh, it just feels absolutely right to, uh, all together yeah it, it's, it's kind of different song for us but uh, still you can hear it start funeral naturally but well, it's uh, probably one of our most groovy mid-tempo songs yeah but uh, then uh, I, I also found it uh, like um, uh, 666 voices inside uh, just uh, reversed basically because uh, this one is calling uh, calling out uh, your inner devils and uh, of course 666 voices inside was uh, going for a bit of a different approach but uh, I found those uh, sort of a similar that's why I asked bec- uh, about um, the battle between the inner demons and angels and uh, know the uh, psychology of man 
But, yeah, uh, uh, but, but to, to, just to make it very simple to uh, to explain uh, uh, that we, we we kind of try to approach it from from our you know that you you have your devil inside of you and, and it's up to you how you use it. Most people are you know uh, trying to push it away, but it's still yeah. going to be part of you. Whatever you fucking do you can go to short try to be exercised or whatever but if that devil inside of you is so fucking strong that that you're afraid of it or whatever you know uh and it's why why not just turn it around and uh, and try to become in peace with it uh, and work with it and use it to your own benefit and, yeah. and make you a strong individual instead and use that dark force uh you know, to gain more power and, and you know, things like that. But of yeah, course, yeah. I mean, I, I got my down period too, even though I feel like, uh, you know, that energy really give, gives me, you know, gives me life. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I also have this, you know, very melancholy, that's what I also bring out in the songs, the melancholic side of me. Uh, and, uh, when I just want to kind of crawl, crawl, uh, crawl into a corner and uh, never, you know, go yeah. out in the open world again. Yeah, we all have those. Yeah, um, tell me about the, the title track. Um, tell me, uh, in your opinion, who is the apocalypse? Uh, is it uh, you as Dark Funeral or is it more of a reference to humanity? Um, literally creating yeah, the atmosphere, of, yeah, the apocalypse, and uh, it's more, more, it's more of uh, of reality. But I, I will say you should, uh, uh, you know, try to find your own uh, uh, idea when you read the lyrics, uh, or check out some, you know, some interest with Helia Mother when he go more in depth what he had in mind for. But that's when yeah. I wrote the lyrics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, but if, you know when we talk about setting a title for the record, me and Helia might have both uh, agree uh, that uh, that was a title that really fit the concept, or not concept, but the vibe of the new record. Uh, so it, it just felt right. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Okay. Um, uh, going away from the from the new record a bit. Um, I would like to hear your opinion about a certain stigma about uh, black metal musicians. So can a black metal musician such as yourself or any other uh, be just a regular person, at least um, outside of the stage or studio? So for instance, if I asked you, uh, and I won't, don't worry, uh, to tell a joke, would you be comfortable doing so without fearing you lose your reputation of being this grim figure of Lord Ariman? Of course, I, I, you know, I, I kind of confident in myself, so I can uh, make jokes and, and, and I know that uh, I have this really, uh, really tough irony uh, and, uh, uh, and yeah, I mean, I'm not afraid to, to fuck around, you know. As I said, I'm confident in myself, and I, I, I think I, I show that I'm uh, the real deal through the band. You know, I've been doing this for quite a while, so I, I'm not worried what people may think if, if I, you know, it, it, it's more like those people who are afraid of uh, of, of showing that side of themselves. Uh, I think they are more they are more like, you know. Uh, you know, kind of putting on an act than yeah. than being real and true to themselves, because every everybody have that inside of themselves. But of course, uh, some people maybe don't want to show it because they think it has to be this way or that way. Uh, but uh, as I said, I'm confident in myself, uh, so I, I don't. I'm not afraid to show. Uh, I mean, yeah, to, to to be yourself in all in all your aspects, yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, we all have different sides of ourselves and different modes, and uh, and of course, I don't show everything uh, 
to the public. There's lots of things I keep very, yeah, very private. Of course, that, that's natural. Um, yeah. um, but that's that's what I, you know, as an artist, uh, you know, you, you got to have some kind of privacy, I think, too. Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, sometimes I, I'm, you know, when I go to concerts and people come out and talk to me, uh, you know, many people say, ah, I'm just, I'm just so surprised that you're always so fucking nice. I'm like, why should I be a fucking prick? If people are nice to me, why should I spend a lot of stupid energy just to be a fucking prick? in return it doesn't make any sense for me if you're nice to me i'm nice back it doesn't mean i have to like you but I, i'm not going to waste my energy on 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 being an idiot idiot that won't lead to anything good uh, but if you fuck with me i can be a fucking you know real devil that's that's for yeah. sure uh, and yeah. that's that's you know people have seen me angry they they usually say that i won <laughs> <laughs> so, but but uh, but luckily I don't have to be that angry uh, angry at people most of the time. So, uh, yeah. so uh, I'm 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 pretty chill, you know. Uh, I think, but uh, uh, you know, fuck with me, I can I can be a fucking I can be real, real nasty. Yeah. Uh, but as I said, you know, if if people are nice to me, I see no reason why why I shouldn't be nice to them in return. Yeah. I even I, I can admit I, even, I helped the fucking old lady the other day on the bus, you know, while people were fucking sitting and she came there, fucking could hardly walk, and everybody was just sitting there. Yeah. And and and, and this this lady were u- using two seats just for herself, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I just told her, you you better fucking move your ass. Yeah. Let her sit. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I can be, you know. I can be a nice guy, you know, in in many ways. Yeah, I get it. Uh, and uh, that, that doesn't that doesn't make me less who I am, you know. Yeah, of course, of course, it's it's quite quite normal. Um, tell me, uh, how often do you reflect on the past? Because I, I get that you don't have much time nowadays, but uh, you know, do you even? Uh, um see yourself as uh, this uh rock star on or uh your band as one of the legendary bands uh, do you consider this uh when you know, when you know people uh, talk to you or uh when you're out there in public or you're in your local record store you know and these people go oh yeah that's lord ariman yeah yeah well, I, i don't I don't really understand. You know, most of the time it feels like they're talking about the guy behind me, but uh, <laughs> sometimes I have a little hard time for that. Uh, I, I don't really, you know, I don't really like looking in the past because what's done is done. You know, I, I rather look into the future and try to, you know, just move on and, and uh, keep on, you know, pushing, uh, pushing myself, the band, and just, you know. You know, yeah. just do things better and more. You know, try to find new inspirations and new ways to uh, to keep me active. You know, uh, so I, I don't see. I mean, it's not that I feel like you know the past is something bad or whatever. It's like it's done. It's never going to happen again. So. I don't want to dwell in that. I'd rather look ahead of, ahead of me and try to, you know, move forward. Yeah. With the band and you know, in life. Yeah, I get that. So um, I get, um, uh, I'm sure uh, you are well aware of uh, the growing number of uh, heavy metal memoirs and uh, biographies. So what would you think about one, about Dark Funeral anytime? Uh, I, I'm not so much for that kind of thing. Uh, I, I've been asked about doing those kind of books about me and my my you know career or whatever my life and stuff like that. But I don't know. Uh, so far, I 
I, I don't know, you know. It's, it's just, I don't feel like going that way. Yeah, but the, the, to, so, to, so, to me, to understand. me, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I understand there's an interest for it, but uh, I've I've turned down every every time I've been asked about it. Yeah, but uh, uh, so. to, to me, to me, it uh, it sounds like uh, you're asking a, a living organism to write its own epitaph, basically, uh, because uh, I, w- w- the way I see it, okay, you are done with your band, and then you sit and have time and uh, whatever you know you're not uh, composing or touring anymore and then you have time to reflect and uh, and write those so those sorts of things but uh, you know dark funeral is uh, very much alive and uh so why close it close the chapter that it's uh, open wide yeah 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 we'll, we'll see in the future I, it's not like I'm saying absolute no to it, but I, I don't. I, I've said no every time I've been asked, and I've been asked for maybe the last ten years, oh. uh, and I, I said no every time. And uh, so we'll see. Yeah. And uh, how about a Dark Funeral tribute album? Um, have you heard bands covering your tracks before? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, there's lots of. You know, guitarists who send me clips and, and also bands uh, who are playing songs. And I mean, I, I think it's really cool, but I'm sad. Uh, you know, sometimes I feel like a dick when I have to say that uh, they're playing the song completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I mean, they, they can play it real. I mean, they are real. They can be really talented musician, but they, uh, there's just one one common mistake. Everybody, pretty much everybody I've seen do. They make they they don't understand uh, um, um, how I combine the lead and rhythm guitar. So they kind of mix it together into one oh, oh, oh. guitar. Uh, and uh, that, that's the most common thing everybody do. Uh, do. And uh, yeah, so, so so far I haven't seen anyone uh, do any of our song, songs correct. Uh, yeah. Actually, to be honest, and, okay. and I know there's lots of tabs on the uh, on the internet too, and uh, play even play through with guitarists, and I'm like, oh shit, I hope. <laughs> I hope people don't really believe that's the way we play the songs because it's just not right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I won't keep you uh, for too long. Uh, an obvious question for the end. Uh, you played in Serbia only once, and uh, believe it or not, I missed you because uh, I was in the army at the time. So, oh. any chance you'll get? I'll uh, get to see you anytime soon. Well, we never say no to a gig, uh, you know, to in any country, basically. Uh, well, of course, some countries you can't just go to play, but uh, but if there is an offer, I mean, we we we're gonna come, that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, naturally, since we only play there once, you know, it would be great to come back with with a new record. So let's see. I mean, we we have some uh, some big European touring plans, and all the bands we are planning those tours with usually touch mostly more countries than we do mm-hmm. uh, so and uh, if we do this together i'm sure we're going to try and cover uh, as many countries as possible in this part of the world yeah okay uh so, so that that would be that would be all for me thank you very much for the time you took to speak to abadan magazine Uh, All the best with the excellent new record and um, upcoming plans. And that will be all for this evening. All right. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.